These five banners represent 67 national titles and a wealth of PWBA history. One will add to that history today at the Greater Cincinnati Open next. The PWBA welcomes you inside Super Bowl in Erlinger, Kentucky for the finals of the Greater Cincinnati Open. Today's competition begins with the 2003 WIBC Queens champ Wendy McPherson taking on 10-time titleist Cheryl Daniels. The winner of the opener will take on the third place qualifier making her third consecutive show, Marianne DeRupo. The victor there will face off against 19-time champion Carolyn Doran Ballard and the winner of that match will go head-to-head -head against top seed Liz Johnson for the title. Hello, everyone. I'm Jan Schmidt. Thanks for joining us. The past three weeks, we've watched relative newcomers take home the title, but tonight and today, it's all about the veterans. The top five have a combined 76 years of tour experience, and working with me, a lady with 11 years of tour knowledge of her own, Kathy Doran Lizzie. Kathy, no newcomers today, but one played a part in Marianne DeRupo making her third straight show for the first time in her career. Well, Jan, we all know Marianne has been a great player on tour. But talent was not the only reason that she got to the show today. Rooming with Tiffany Stambro, who everyone knows has won the last four of seven of our events, rejuvenated a new spirit in Marianne to let her have more fun while she bowls. She sees excitement in Tiffany's victories and now reflects back at when she was at the top of her game. Well, talk about being rejuvenated, Kathy. How about Cheryl Daniels? She must feel all the nerves and excitement of a newcomer. It's her first show in nearly two years. Two years since we've seen Cheryl Daniels, and it has been longer than that since her last victory in 1996. We all have to remember, Cheryl Daniels is a power player veteran who was an unfortunate victim of the changing technologies in the game of bowling, along with Nikki Giannullius, Donna Adamick, and currently our Anne Marie Dugan. But she focused on her music and coaching. Through coaching, she also became a student, picked up a few tips, made her game as simple as possible, and now she's back, ready for action. You will see a more confident and competitive Cheryl Daniels today than you have in 23 years. She is now ready to take on her first competitor, Wendy McPherson. And I bet she does feel some nerves. You'd have to after two years, even though she is a veteran. Wendy McPherson, though, has been on three of our shows already this season. Should be very comfortable. She'll choose, actually she'll start the match. It was Cheryl Daniels' choice. Cheryl qualified fourth. Her choice to let Wendy start. Wendy is waiting while there's some movement going on on the approach. Some people immediately to her right and wants to make sure she's focused for a good opening shot. pin and hitting the pocket was basically pretty easy this week but carrying out the 10 pins sometimes was a challenge she'll change balls and shoot at the 10 pin qualified fifth 231.45 average average is very high this week and sliding off missing the 10 pin and that's so not like her, Jan. Wendy is one of the best spare shooters on tour. You won't see this very often. But this week, there was a puddle of oil in the middle, and it was very easy to miss. You are right and left-sided spares due to that puddle in the middle. First look at Cheryl Daniels here in a couple of years, and she leaves a 10-pin as well. In fact, Kathy Wendy McPherson, so far this year, through three shows, is 9 for 9 on single-pin spares, 100% until that miss of the 10-pin. That's why she makes it as often as she does. And Cheryl oh probably watched Wendy, and she misses it on the inside. Well, she probably saw how Wendy missed it to the right in the puddle, so Cheryl compensated not to throw it so hard through the oil. And unfortunately, it never got there. So both ladies... Start off basically even after two errors. Qualifying fourth for Cheryl with a 231 average. Coming up.
Mark Light leaving the five pin. And Kathy, I know scores high this week. Did you get to look at them in practice at all? Did it look like um, they were hitting the pocket quite a bit? They did, but you know, they only get so many shots and they try different balls with different surfaces. And the lane started out a little tough to begin with, but by the end of the first game, it was a strike fest. I mean, it was really high scoring. Covers up the spare, so we have our first mark of the match. You can see this week the surface was wood. Prodigy oil, which we are under sport bowling. We are always on a modified sport bowling pattern, which is more difficult. Third TV appearance, and she shook off that 10 pin very quickly. Wendy is sporting some of the new dress code here. People, uh, the women can wear pretty much whatever they want. She was talking about it last night and said she was very happy with the new dress code. Thought everybody was doing a great job at choosing their attire. I think the ladies look great. They look comfortable. And I think it makes for a more relaxing atmosphere. And they're athletes. So they should be dressed athletically and in whatever way they can perform. Yes, they should. And comfortable. 203 average on this TV pair. That was the lowest of the five finalists. And a big double for Wendy McPherson to take an early 10 pin lead. Well, Wendy said her timing is always an issue, but when her timing is on, she's deadly. And she told us last night in her interview, the timing was on. Okay, so another 10 pin for Cheryl Daniels. And you know every week if you're watching our shows, we have a BullishParadise.com Ask the Pro question. And the winner this week, the question that we use, will receive an Ebonite TPC shooter ball from BullishParadise.com and a $50 shopping spree at PWBA.com. And the lady you're watching now, Cheryl Daniels, will answer that question. So stay tuned to see if it's you. She wasn't going to let another 10 pin slip by her, that's for sure. She covers that one up as she trails now by 11 pins through three frames. Still hasn't been able to strike. And that's what this week was all about, throwing strikes. Cheryl Daniels had the fourth highest average on this pair of 221 out of the five competitors. Wow, all right. Just knocking out the 10 pins. Well, it was very important. Your angle of entry was very important this, this week for the high scores. You can see... Cheryl throws a very powerful ball, a lot of rotation, but she also throws it with a lot of speed, which is two positives for a great athlete. But your angle of entry was extremely important. If you didn't have the right angle, you were not going to shoot 230 to keep up with the field. And Jan, as you know, in these strike fests, if you shoot anything under 230 in some rounds, you're losing ground on the field. You are, and Wendy McPherson... Leading by 11, max score possible if she strikes out. 279, she just took a re-rack, so she might have felt that um, pins a little bit off spot also can cause a 10 pin or another pin to be left. As she goes for three in a row to go for a 21 pin lead. As you can see, Wendy will be playing the, the lanes a lot straighter than Cheryl because Wendy has a five-step delivery, pushes off on her second step. Perfect positioning right here, getting ready to go into her slide, bringing the ball down. She really posts her shot. Great athlete. She gets the job done. So she now leads by 21 pins through four frames. Max score possible for Cheryl Daniels, though, still 258, so it's still anybody's match. There's another 10 pin. Corner pins were a nightmare this week. Even though the scores were high, I can't stress enough that your angle of entry was very important to kick those corner pins out or you were shooting at a lot of single pins. And as we spoke to quite a few of the girls, Jan, when you throw so many strikes, sometimes you get a little lax on a spare or two because you're not accustomed to shooting that many. Exactly. And this time she covers it up solid. So midway through the opening match, Wendy McPherson has the lead by 20 pins. 
We'll be right back with more from the Super Bowl in Erlinger, Kentucky. Stay with us. The championship round finals of the Greater Cincinnati Open are being brought to you by the Women's International Bowling Congress, striving for 88 years to identify and fulfill the needs of women bowlers. By PWBA.com, your source for the latest PWBA news, information, merchandise, and more. And by BowlersParadise.com, the official online pro shop of the Professional Women's Bowling Association. And we're back, and Cheryl Daniels just threw two in a row in the fifth and sixth frames for a three-bagger. She now trails by just ten pins. Actually all even now by virtue of that strike in the sixth frame. Wendy McPherson, 289 high game this week. Low games were significantly higher than they've been, 174 for low. Even though Wendy is playing the lanes a little straighter than Cheryl, their break point is at the same spot. Everyone's break point is basically the same area on the lane. It's just how you get to it. She plays between 8 and 12. She gets her ball out to about 7. No problem. She is a striking machine when she is on. You don't get 20 titles without striking a lot. Exactly. So both athletes on a strike now. If they both strike out, we'll have a dead heat at 2.58. Wendy doing her part. Now a lot, Kathy talked about the victim of the changes in technology for Cheryl, and she's made some changes in her game, um, timing a big key for her. She trails now by 10. What else has she worked on? Her release? She worked on her release. She experimented with a few grip changes, but Cheryl is so multi-talented in the game of bowling, let alone her music and drilling balls and coaching career. But she can make her timing later, she can make it earlier, and she reads her ball reaction better now than she ever has. That's so important for her. 23 years, that's a lot of experience. It is, and that's, that's so interesting when you made the analogy to Nikki and, and Donna and, and even Anne-Marie, the changes they've had to make in their game and how the game is, it's like, you know, they're working hard so it doesn't pass them by. It just, it's a whole different style of bowling today. Yes, it is. And you either keep up with the times or the times leave you behind. The timing is everything. I believe that in every sport. You have to have good physical timing. So right now, Wendy McPherson stepping up in the eighth trails by 10 pins. If she strikes here, the match will be all even. And there's a look at the titles won by these five ladies you'll see today. Wendy on top with 20, Carolyn 19, and so on. Another 10 pin jumping up for Wendy McPherson. Now you can see that ball didn't really get out to about seven or eight like the others did. Angle of entry. She needs to really get it to curve just a hair so it can recover more. That stayed around eight, nine. She probably needs to get it to about six, seven for it to really get a little more juice in the back. But she has a great shot to the pocket, so it's very difficult to want to change anything. Oh, no. I have never I can't seen believe Wendy it. miss two, two spares in a game. Let I haven't two either. Single pins. Never. I, never. You don't get a door opened like that all the time. Now, do you think the 10 pin is playing different, sliding more on one lane versus the other? Because she missed it on seven right. Cheryl missed it on the left on lane eight, and now she missed it on the left on lane eight. It and could be. We saw wondering. a couple of weeks ago that the lanes were totally different. Mm-hmm. It doesn't affect her much, though, Jan. What a great shot to come back with. That's a champion shot right there. Well, Cheryl Daniels sitting sitting down, got a big break there. As you see, she defeated Wendy during the week by just six pins. She now leads by 23 as she steps up in the ninth, and she can take it to 33 with a strike here. Oh, and a 10 pin. So that seems to be the, the trick today. Now, Cheryl continuously keeps leaving the corner pins. You can see how heavy her ball comes in, hits the five pin, hits the nine pin. 
But the six goes around the ten. She may want to try to stay behind the ball just a little bit more. So the ball makes one motion into the pocket. Mellows the reaction out just a little bit and it may kick those tens out. She really comes around the ball. That's why she's a, plow a power player. Well, she's now up by 22 pins. She steps up in the 10th. She could strike it out for 237, best possible for Wendy McPherson, 225. So Cheryl Daniels can shut out Wendy McPherson here. Actually, with a strike in a nine. I... Oh, Jan, that was a beautiful shot. She couldn't have thrown that any better. Cheryl takes a four-step delivery. You can see how she just stays behind that ball as long as she can and really rips through it with her. She has such a strong release. You can see her fingers really rip through it. Great, great athlete. So she'll need to pull nine pins on these next two shots to win this match. And that's enough. Now that one, she got a little left to target. But as I said before, we had a puddle of oil in the middle and you were allowed to get away with the shots like that a little bit. And you know what, if it's there, use it. Exactly. If you can use it to your advantage, don't be an idiot, use it. Sometimes that's the key, finding the place where you do have a little bit of an advantage. Absolutely, take every advantage you can, whether you have free hook or oil in the middle, use it to your advantage. So Cheryl Daniels, after opening up in that first frame, comes back to win the opener over Wendy McPherson and she'll advance. But first, when we return, bowlers step up for the cause. Welcome back to the Greater Cincinnati Open. We're at the Super Bowl in Erlinger, Kentucky. I'm Jan Schmidt along with Kathy Doran Lizzie. We've just completed the opening match where Cheryl Daniels defeated Wendy McPherson by a score of 237 to 225. Once again, WIBC members, including the PWBA athletes, bowled for the cure. Details in this week's WIBC Extra Frames. In October 2000, the Women's International Bowling Congress launched Bowl for the Cure, a nationwide initiative benefiting the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. By embracing the Bowl for the Cure program, bowlers have raised more than $2.2 million to fight this dreaded disease and to raise awareness of the Komen Foundation by educating bowlers about breast cancer and breast health. WIBC designates February as Bowl for the Cure Month. During that month, participating bowling leagues select one bowling session as Bowl for the Cure Day, on which bowlers donate a penny per pin or any month they wish for their series bowled. Each year across the country, bowlers and associations donate their time and effort to support this cause. At the 2003 WIBC convention in April, with more than 2,300 delegates present at the Reno Sparks Convention Center during Meet for the Cure, Patrice Tosi, Komen Foundation COO and Executive Vice President, accepted a check for $721,000 from breast cancer survivors and WIBC members Diane Hartman and Pat Johnson. This represented a year of WIBC fundraising efforts. The presentation honored those that lost their battle with this killer disease and featured more than 100 breast cancer survivors. Breast cancer is the leading cancer cited among American women. This year, someone will be diagnosed with breast cancer every two and a half minutes. When breast cancer is confined to the breast, the five-year survival rate is 97%. Don't wait. Learn about breast cancer and breast health by visiting bowlforthecure.com. Darlene Baker, WIBC director. I think she travels with us full time on tour now. Always out. Great lady. We thank her for being here. And Joe Diamond, WIBC director. Her first assignment at a PWBA national stop. We'll step away for a minute, but we'll return with match two. Cheryl Daniels will take on the lady you're seeing for the third week in a row, Marianne DeRupo. ESPN's coverage of the 57th annual College World Series continues as the first ever championship series continues this afternoon with game two between the Rice Owls and the Stanford Cardinal, with Rice leading one game to none in the best of three series. The College World Series is on ESPN and also available on ESPN HD, ESPN's new high-definition service, now available nationwide. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV or your cable operator to get ESPN HD. The College World Series live from Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska, immediately following the PWBA. 
Cheryl Daniels now stepping up, ready for match two. Good comeback for Cheryl after that open frame to start the first game. Yes, and she told me she drilled this ball for yesterday morning's block. And she happened to bowl 298 over yesterday morning, which is her highest block. And that's the ball she's using right now. But she also told me the lanes are hooking more. But she looked on her sheet, and seven and eight is the pair she started qualifying on. And this pair hooked more for her today, but it hooked more than any other pair the whole week. Okay, so she covers up a 10 pin. And when you talk about a block, Kathy, so for match play, the blocks and qualifying are eight games, so they understand 293 pins over. That's over a 200 average per game for the eight game total. Yes, yeah, so these girls just creamed them in the eight games, plus the bonus pins. Remember, the bonus pins are so huge. Liz Johnson, who had the best match play record at 19 and five. Here. Hit it, hit it. Hit it. All right, she got the break. Rolling the 10 out. We've seen a lot of 7-10s early on in the matches these last few weeks. Marianne, another girl that puts a lot of revolutions on the ball. Nice ball speed. Comes up a little light in the pocket, leaving the 7-10. Then just the 7. <laughs> oh, still standing up in the channel. Does that count? No, I'm just kidding. Thank God it doesn't. <laughs> no kidding. Hi, All right, and she spares it up. And we've been talking about knocking down so many pins and really just just looking at the corner pins to get those out and look at these scores. Six 300 games this week, two 800 series. Cindy Coburn Carroll and Cheryl Daniels rolled one of those. 68 700 series, 87 games over 270 wow. or better. I mean, that's just the only word you could use is awesome. It is 135 times someone bowled 225 or better and lost in match play. That's not any fun. And talk oh about a 710. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, oh. oh, I thought the seven pin was going unbelievable. Two shots in a row, almost leaving the 710 the first. Well, you can see Marianne's ball gets all the way out to about 5-6 and charges back into the pocket a little late. That's why her ball's coming up a little light and it's not hitting as hard as it, as it should. All right, a lot of game left. But she's playing the lanes exactly where Cheryl is. So that's very interesting. Jan will be able to see how those lanes are going to break down because these two ladies are playing them the same. You heard her say a lot of game left, so she's not panicked over that open frame. It was a good shot in the pocket. 15 and 9 in match play for Cheryl Daniels. The 30 pins you were talking about, very significant there. And another corner pin, but same start as last game, leaving the corners, and then she was able to figure it out. Marianne actually had the highest round out of everybody, shooting 387 over for those eight games in match play. She was phenomenal yesterday morning. Cheryl covers up the 10, and we've talked about it being her first show in nearly two years, and Kathy asked her where she's been the past two years. You know, um, last year, unfortunately, I had a really bad injury to my knee, and I ended up bowling a few tournaments pretty much injured. I wasn't very effective, so I ended up putting a lot of time into coaching. I actually got involved in drilling. I'm drilling at Novi Bowl, and um, worked with high school bowling. I worked with North Hill High School and also Novi Bowl. And also I did a lot of, uh, a few clinics, and uh, also did a lot of coaching out of Thunder Bowl lanes, too. So I've been really busy in spite of the fact that I wasn't on tour full time. It sounds like she has been busy and really, really enjoying that coaching. As she said, Novi High School and, and Northville High School. And uh, she does private coaching, too, for like 15 to 20 people. And she wants to say hi to Jerry, the proprietor at Novi Bowl, and Dave Sell for all his help in the pro shop. 234 average for Marianne DeRupa. That was the up. third highest on this pair. Much better shot by Marianne. She switched balls. You can see the way her ball now penetrated into the pocket. It went back and got the nine pin. That's a powerful ball. Much better. Kick the 10 out. Angle of entry, very important this week. 14, 9, and 1 in match play. Now, when there's a tie during the week, it's a 50 pin, uh, excuse me, 15 pin bonus. They each get 15, they split those 30. Maximum scores, if they go off the sheet with strikes, 279 for Daniels. Yes. Much better shot. 
I would have to guess to say, Jan, that Marion went to a stronger ball or a ball that had a little more surface or a stronger drilling in it. So it rolls a little sooner. And then by the time it makes its angle into the pocket, it blows the pins instead of coming up too light. Well, Cheryl is lined in. She isn't going home quiet. Next week, the PWBA will be back in Mechanicsburg, PA, at ABC West Lanes. Watch the finals live next Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Then it's on to Winchester Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. Tune in Sunday, July 6th for Final Five action of that event. And then the summer tour wraps up at Don Carter's All-Star West in Dallas, Texas, with the live final Sunday, July 13th at 1 p.m. That's all right here on ESPN. Contact those bowling centers if you want to bowl the Pro-Am. Another 10 pin for Cheryl. Now that was a flat 10. And what we mean by that is the ball entered the pocket late and it just wasn't going to carry. Very light, light 10 pin. She told me also on the break, spares seem a little tricky because the front part of the lane seems to be hooking a lot for her. And if you overthrow it in the oil, it'll go in the gutter like Wendy's. Well, with that spare, Cheryl Daniels is out in front by 11 pins through four and a half frames. We'll be back in a moment with more from Erlinger, Kentucky. Stay with us. Welcome back, and there's a lot of traffic out on the Ohio River. I can, I can understand why, if that's today. It's beautiful out there. I'm sure it was a day just like that. Right now, we're in the middle of our second match at the Greater Cincinnati Open. Mary Ann DeRuffle threw, threw a strike and now covered that 10 pin. So Cheryl Daniels in the lead by just two pins. She'll be stepping up in the sixth frame. Close matches. Cheryl talked about her patience being a very big strength of hers this week. And that's, that's kind of a new thing for Cheryl Daniels. She really wasn't the most patient person and she's doing a great job with that. She said she, her strength was her mental focus, having patience when the shot wasn't, the pins weren't falling or flying around for her. And you're right, Jan, I think that's one of the main reasons why she made the show is because she learned how to be patient. But her weakness, we could have a little giggle, was potential retirement, which of yeah. course, we're never gonna allow her to leave that easy. No, no, no. WBC Hall of Famer. Here's our other finishers in sixth place. Cindy Coburn Carroll, our veteran, just missing. She led one of the rounds during the week. And Jackie Mitscavage shot two 300s this week. One of them was against me. Tish Johnson threw a 300 game this week, but we specifically want to congratulate her, the Iron Woman, on surpassing Harry Sullen's record of 239 consecutive events that spanned from July of 86 to August of 93. Marianne up quickly in the seventh frame, trailing by 12, now trailing by 13 by leaving that 10 pin. And this is Tish's 241st consecutive event, spanning 11 years. So the Iron Woman has now become the Iron Bowler, overtaking men and women in the most consecutive events bold. That's, that's pretty impressive. Of, that's a lot of sacrificing too of your personal life. Yes, it is. And your body. Yes. Marianne, a, a big fan of the spare ball also. Switches balls to go cross lane for the 10 pin. Makes it no problem. Another great spare shooter. She trails by 13. It was interesting, Kathy, in talking to her about keeping her game more simple. She told us that it actually makes her execution better because she doesn't get caught up in all this stuff of what bowling ball am I throwing, where am I going, what am I doing, and she can just concentrate on the execution of her shot. She's relying more on her physical abilities rather than changing balls, four, five, six balls every round. She's keeping it more simple. She makes three shows in a row. Great concept. Very. And great ball change. The best of the PGA Tour tee it up this afternoon at the Buick Classic. Right now, there's a four-way tie for the lead. Who will win this coveted title? Find out beginning at 3 p.m. this afternoon on ABC Sports.
Cheryl Daniels right now trying to win this match, leading by 13 pins, working on a double, can take it to 23. And almost a 7-10, Kathy. On the same lane that Marion almost left hers. Mm -hmm. It appears that Cheryl has moved a little right. That ball really got out to about 4-5. Just didn't have enough juice on it to carry the 10, but we're accustomed to seeing that. If you weren't throwing six in a row, you were shooting at three single pins. Covering up the 10 pin, and right now I think everybody's just happy to, to cover the 10 pin every time they leave it. Well, she had told me before that the, her, the front part of the lane seems to be hooking for her, so she has to be cautious not to cut the ball short going for the 10 pin because she missed it on the left. But then you can't overthrow it through the oil or, or else you'll miss it to the right, as did Wendy. Up by 12, stepping up in the ninth. And she needed to set that one up. Uh, Marianne's up on a strike in the eighth. She, she was she a little pumped on that shot, Kathy. She throws an awesome ball, and she has worked hard, physically and mentally. So Marianne down by 12, but because of the strike in the eighth, she can take it off the sheet for 235. Daniels can take it off the sheet for 237. So Marianne's still well in this match, but really needs a strike here. Oh, wow, that's a tough lead, 2-8-10, 4-8-10, excuse me. You know, her last shot on lane eight, she didn't get quar quite far right as she has been. This one, she did the same thing, and you can see it just slides in the oil. You have to still get it to the right to grab the dry, and she knew it. She didn't, she didn't get the ball to the right, it's gotta grab the dry in order for it to recover. There's such a puddle in the middle. You have to go around that puddle in order to get your ball to get to the pocket. So with that open frame, she's down by 26 pins, and the best she can shoot here is 201, which wouldn't even require a mark out of Cheryl Daniels. Marianne career stats, 51 TV appearances, as we said, her third in a row. She was hoping to make the third time a charm. That's unfortunate. She bowled an excellent game. Switched balls, went to the right ball, played the lanes correctly, made her spares. It's unfortunate to get a break like that. Well, she'll cover up the spares and she'll go on to next week and hope to make it four in a row. Well, that would make her mom happy, Rosemary, still recovering from cer cervical neck surgery. Rosemary, we're all thinking about you and, and glad that you're feeling better. I think that's another reason Mary Ann's making all these shows. She's doing it for her mom. Absolutely. Right So Cheryl Daniels advances by defeating Marianne DeRupo. But first, when we come back, the athletes discuss their hunger, but not for a win. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Super Bowl in Erlinger, Kentucky. We're here for the Greater Cincinnati Open. I'm Jan Schmidt, along with Kathy Doran Lizzie. We just completed match two. Cheryl Daniels continued to truck up the ladder, defeating DeRupo 237 to 191. All PWBA athletes are hungry for a win, but they talk about satisfying another hunger as they discuss their favorite foods in this week's PWBA Out Loud. Favorite food? That would probably be uh, spaghetti, and that would be my mom's spaghetti because it's, it just tastes good, and she, she likes to cook that for me just before I go out on tour and sometimes when I come home also. <laughs> I always joke, I tell my husband, I said, I could eat pasta every day. I don't, but I could. My favorite food is pasta. Uh, I can eat pasta every night of the week. Uh, doesn't matter, spaghetti, penne pasta. I just really enjoy it. My favorite food is sushi. Um, my roommate, Tennille, and, and I, we try to go out once a week while we're on tour to have sushi. Um, it's just a good, fresh taste, and a lot of people say, ew. You know, so it's, um, it, it's, I really like it. It's good. We're both vegetarians. Uh, so we spend a lot of time in both Thai restaurants and Indian restaurants. So um, I would say the Indian buffet. Oh, I'm, I like cheeseburgers. <laughs> They're just simple and always good. 
A favourite food would have to be anything that has chocolate in it. Uh, I have to say that is my weakness. Uh, don't drink, don't smoke, but I love my chocolate. I love pizza. I love Italian food. And I, I don't really know why, I just really like it. Maybe that's why I married an Italian. Stay with us up next. Cheryl Daniels continues to get airtime as she challenges Carolyn Dorn Ballard. It'll be semi-final action. Tune in again next Sunday beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern for the finals of the Greater Harrisburg Open from ABC West Lanes in Mechanicsburg, PA. Our Honey Church will look to defend last year. She defeated Kim Terrell in the championship match. Join us next Sunday at 1 p.m. And we are ready for the semifinal match of the Greater Cincinnati Open and Cheryl Daniels. Wow, what a comeback performance for Cheryl after being off the show for two years. She defeated Marianne DeRupo, as we just showed you, 237 to 191. And she'll start this match. Carolyn's going to make her finish last. And again, as she did all the other games, starting with the 10 pin. I asked her during the break, are you trying to stay behind the ball or are you trying to come around? It? She said, I'm really trying to stay behind it. So the ball does make one motion and kicks the corner pins out. But she said, you know how it goes. You always wind up coming around it. <laughs> and, uh oh, and sliding off on lane seven. All the misses on seven have been in the channel. On eight have been to the left. So just as she started the first game, an open frame. Carolyn Doran Ballard now, 38 years old, 14 years on tour, and 19 titles. Great opening shot by Carolyn. She drilled that ball last night. She's been using that type of equipment all week. She wanted a ball that rolled just a little bit sooner. She's going to go down and in. Liz will be in the same area. Angle of entry, down and in, sometimes is the better carry. Other times, look at Cheryl, 230, left to right. However, the pins are going to blow her out. Carolyn quickly up by 11 pins. She qualified second with 235 average. She actually had the highest average, but not the highest match play record, 14 and 10, which put her in the second place position. And there's a 10 pin on lane seven, and Carolyn just um, lost her microphone. <laughs> now let's see what she's gonna do on this 10 pin. She, she's falling apart just a little bit, but <laughs> thought maybe she was gonna take it off and sing us a song or something. She came through that shot pretty good, so much so, so ripped her mic right off of her. Hope nothing else falls off. <laughs> She might sing us a song. Very talented, just like you, Kathy. Both of you very good singers. That's another show, Jean. Oh, okay. Meanwhile, let's see how Carolyn does on lane seven in shooting the 10 pin. No problem. The, the 10 pin was a difficult spare on some pairs. Remember, we have the puddle of oil in the middle. If you shoot it too hard through the middle, it's gonna go in the gutter. But then if you hesitate and you're cautious and you try to short shorten your swing, you're going to miss it to the left. You really have to be aggressive. And kicking out the 10 pin, I'm sure she's relieved is that that one came out. Like you were talking about was she rolling the ball, was she staying behind it, coming around it, and that's one of the things she said to us last night, Kathy, that she's almost where she wants to be in terms of coming out of the ball, and she can read her ball so much better than she could before. Definitely, and she is a big fan on timing. I see her working with a lot of the ladies that don't make the cut or that want to do some extra practicing, always teaching them how to get perfect timing. Very important. Ooh, and that was a, was a bad shot. That was a very bad shot. That was left off her hand and didn't hold four-step delivery by Cheryl. Beautiful finish at the foul line. But she just overthrew it, but never got it to the right. And she, she had to kick her leg a bit to try to keep that ball on the lane and pick up that 10 pin, but she's successful. So as we, I'm sorry, Jan. As we said before with Wendy and Cheryl, Carol, uh, Carolyn and Cheryl's breakpoints will be in the same spot. They're just going at them from different directions. 
Different set down areas on the lane. Oh, and a really light mixer for Carolyn. Light sometimes is great. Cheryl's thrown many great shots solid in the pocket, still leaving a corner pin. Marianne also, she switched those balls, was blowing the pins around. Strike's a strike. So Carolyn now up by 11 pins, and Carolyn has the highest average on this pair. That was through three games this week of the five finalists. Liz was second high, and and then the others on down the line. So throughout the week, Carolyn fared very well on lane seven and eight here. Oh my God, Jan, I can't even begin to tell you how many of those we have seen all week. That is the only true tap in bowling. Perfect shot. She couldn't have thrown that any better. Look at how the ball nicks it, but it doesn't fall. Drives hard, the five can go straight back. Nothing takes out the eight. Carolyn's third appearance of this year, having a very good season, no wins so far. But high finishes, all top 10. In fact, it's her 16th straight top 10 if you date back to last season. So Cheryl now trailing by 11 as she steps up in the fifth frame. Her maximum score possible, 259. Cheryl stuck a little bit up there. She either stuck or slipped. I think she stuck, but she stayed on the shot enough to get it to carry. She's a five-step approach. I think she's thrilled she just stayed on her two feet. Yeah, she said, I can't even stand up. I think oh, she slipped. It looks like she slipped, fell off that a bit, but she may be getting a little fast. She, she stayed on that one solid. Wow, that was a great shot. Yes. She concentrated on staying with that shot. Look at the rotation on that ball. She must have got that ball all the way out to about three, four. That's where the hook spot was. One, two, three, two, three, four. That's where the hook spot was. Your ball is always gonna come back if you hit that spot. You can see how hard her ball charged to the pocket once she got it out that far right. So right now, through four and a half frames, Carolyn Dorn Ballard has the lead by 11 pins in the semifinal match of the Greater Cincinnati Open. We'll be right back. ESPN's coverage of the 57th annual College World Series continues as the first ever championship series continues this afternoon with game two between the Rice Owls and the Stanford Cardinal with Rice leading one game to none in the best of three series. The College World Series on ESPN is also available on ESPN HD. ESPN's new high definition service now available nationwide. So call 1-800-DIRECT-TV for your or your cable operator to get ESPN HD. College World Series live from Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska, will be immediately following the PWBA. Carolyn Dorn Ballard now up in the fifth frame here of the semifinal match of the Greater Cincinnati Open. She leads by 11 pins, and she's been striking on lane eight, sparing on lane seven. She's on lane eight right now. Oh my God, Jan. Wow. Solid eight last frame, solid seven this frame. Look at how she posts her shot. Beautiful knee bend, full extension. Buries this ball in the pocket, buries it. And the seventh and never gets touched. Unbelievable. Quite frustrating, and there's that 14 and 10 match play record, which even though she had the highest average, made her second instead of leading the tournament. Covers up that spare. Carolyn was up on top of this event throughout a good part of the week. Three of the rounds, as you see there. Cindy Coburn Carroll back out on tour here a little bit, led one of the rounds. She pulled phenomenal. She crossed right next to me, and I gotta tell you, she looked fantastic. And then Liz Johnson, as usual, finds her way to lead the tournament. So a 10-pin lead right now for Carolyn Doran Ballard over Cheryl Daniels. And it's going to be a match of carry here. Carolyn's been leaving some... Oh, beautiful shots. Some of everything, actually. Some of everything. 
I hate to say it, we haven't seen a nine pin. You know, I thought of saying that, Kathy, but I thought I better not, so. Well, you can blame me then if she <laughs> leaves one. Carolyn had one of the 300s this week. Carolyn made it very easy this week. The shot was very conducive to her game, to many of the players' games. There was a great shot out there. You just had to find your angle of entry, the right surface, the right ball speed. And everything really gelled together to create these high scores. Stay on your spares. But she came out Saturday morning, Jan, and she threw five different balls in her first five games. I mean, she used an array of equipment. But that's knowing your equipment, too, to right. have the confidence to go to five different balls. So Cheryl now trailing by nine. And both ladies trying to figure out how to carry. And that's the way to do it. We talked about not seeing Cheryl on TV for two years, and that is except for the highlights from her WIBC Hall of Fame induction. That was in 2002 when she took her rightful place in the history of women's bowling. Cheryl is also a member of the Detroit Bowling and Michigan Women's Halls of Fame. Very talented lady. Multi-talented. Yes. Also a music career, singer, writer. That shot there, she kept in a little, more so than the others, that she's really getting to the right. But because of her rotation on the ball, kept it on line. And there you have it, a, a, a huge double. It is because it gave her the lead for the first time in this match. Dorn Ballard now trails by one as she steps up in the seventh, and she has just been all over the pocket. Hitting solid also, but not carrying. There she kicks out long. Lane seven, though, has been her good one, except for the last shot. Well, as I said before, the hook spot was around one, two, three, two, three, four. Once you get your ball in that area, you can guarantee it's coming back to hit the pocket. You may leave a single pin, but you'll be safe. You won't leave clusters. When you don't leave, leave clustered spares, you don't chop anything. That's why these girls average so high. They keep it safe. She still trails by one, and actually it's lane eight that's been her good lane. She was up in the seventh frame, lane eight. She struck three times. She has not struck yet on lane seven, where she is right now. Needs it for a double to take the lead back. Thank you I wasn't very really much. sure about that I one. I wasn't either. But she'll take it after the two disastrous bad breaks she's had. Comes up a little light. Ball looked as though it rolled out. But she carried. She was through. Oh, she, I think she was shocked, too. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> Cheryl, meanwhile, quickly up in the 10-pin. Left standing. Oh. Messenger won't get it. When I spoke to Cheryl and Carolyn before this match began, both girls stated... This pair is hooking more quicker than earlier in the week. They've had to make adjustments quicker on the TV pair. And I think a lot of that has to do with the lights, too. 2.10 career average for, for 59 appearances on TV for Cheryl. That's why she is in that Hall of Fame. Covers up the spare now, and right now trails by 10 pins. And this has really been a teeter-totter match. Both ladies only able to secure one double, but that miss in the first frame by Cheryl Daniels right now, the 10-pin deficit that she has. Oh, Jan. It is frustrating. That's crisp. That was a crisp, beautiful shot. You can see when she releases her hand position, she gets the ball out, five, six, seven, ring 10. That's a ring 10. She can't believe that one didn't carry. She'll have to hold the spare. Okay, she has it down now. She's no problem with the tension for Cheryl now. Carolyn Doran Ballard working on a double and she wanted to say belated happy birthday to Jeff. Lizzie, her brother-in-law, that would be your husband, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. God bless him. Yes. And a, and a uh, early happy anniversary to her husband, Del. She says, thank you for the seven glorious years. Mm. And that was a glorious strike to her right now because that's a three-bagger. And that gives her 
That's 21 pin lead at this point in time, and she'll step up in the 10th frame with a chance to close it out. Best Cheryl Daniels could shoot would be 207. What a game she bowled, too. So but Carolyn, if Carolyn, I'm sorry, Jan, if Carolyn carries the stone eight and the stone seven, right. she's got one heck of a game going. Well, she'll need a mark right here in the 10th frame. You can see she's talking to herself. Oh, boy, Jan. That was absolutely no doubt about it. That was, I want to bowl for the title strike. Posts are shot, never moves after the ball releases. That's why the ball rolls so beautiful. When you post your shot, when you're up there at the line with good timing, strong release, long arm swing, you're always going to be able to read your ball reaction. Your ball will always roll true. That's what you want. That's what she has. And she doesn't care about that 10 pin. Nothing more needed. Just needed a mark in that frame. It's going to be interesting. She's, she's going to get another ball, Kathy. She's, she's going to test another ball. She's going to blow off the 10 pin and try another shot. Absolutely. Smart move. Just This is the just-in-case move, but a very effective and smart move. Uh, she said um, mentally she was a little out of it the last couple days. I think she she's did. I think she's reconfirming the fact that, you know, her birthday's coming up too, Jan. She's going to be 39, I think. She's getting old. Yeah, I think that, that might have a lot happen. to do with it. Okay, so she just wants to know what her options are, should she need to change in order to carry. Cheryl Daniels. It was tremendous. After two years off of television, she came out here and looked like she never went away. So she finishes up third. Carolyn Doran Ballard defeats Cheryl Daniels, and she'll advance to the championship match. But first, when we return, another one of your questions will be answered. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Greater Cincinnati Open at the Super Bowl in Erlinger, Kentucky. I'm Jan Schmidt along with Kathy Doran Lizzie, and we've just completed the semifinal match. Carolyn Doran Ballard ended Cheryl Daniels' hopes 226 to 207. The questions continue to come in, and this week's BowlersParadise.com Ask the Pro question comes from H. Mathis of Chicago, Illinois, who asks, what's the best way to attack a reverse block condition where the oil is mainly near the gutters, 10 and out? and the dry area is in the middle. I'm a big hook, high rev player, and this condition is my nemesis. Ten-time titleist Cheryl Daniels gave him the answer. My suggestion is to move left, uh, extreme left. You're usually gonna have to choose a ball that's gonna get further down the lane, so you don't want a really big hook ball. Pick something that's a little more tame, and maybe move your target a little further down the lane so that you can get a little more length. But you don't want to try to cover a ton of boards because you have the out-of-bounds area to the right. Liz Johnson is warming up right now, getting ready for the championship match. Coming up next, Carolyn Dorn Ballard will move up the ladder into that championship position and take on Liz Johnson. Stay tuned for the championship match of the Greater Cincinnati Open. And we hope Cheryl answered that question and helped you out. So if you want to ask a question, send it to pwba.com. You actually link to pwba.com and click on bowlersparadise.com, ask the pro, and that's where you can send your question. Hope to hear from you. And right now we're ready for the championship match of the Greater Cincinnati Open. Liz Johnson, top seed. She has chosen to start, Kathy, so she will finish the match last. The pressure will be on her. Which means she obviously likes lane eight better to finish on, that she would sacrifice ending the match first. Exactly. 29 years old, eight years on tour, and 11 titles. 
five of which have come from the leader position, which I think is just a, a tremendous stat to it win is. that many times from the leader position. But their career versus one another, six and O, oh, Liz tops Carolyn. On TV. On TV. Ooh. Well, Carolyn got here by defeating Cheryl Daniels. She's going to need those 10 pins to carry. Well, Liz is playing the lanes identical to how she played them all week. And she happens to think that both lanes are tighter. Carolyn says lane 8 is tighter for her. Lane 7 has a little more hook. Well, Carolyn's going for her 20th title here to bec become a member of a pretty elite group. But there's an awful lot of streaks in progress by PWA members, and here's a couple of them. Carolyn Doran Ballard, 71 consecutive cuts the record robin romeo with 77 and of course tish johnson we told you before bowling her 241st consecutive pwba tournament and kathy i never thought anyone would get near robin romeo's record of 77 consecutive cuts no and i i would have to say it's an it's an awesome you know records are meant to be broken these are awesome records and they're going to be broken because these girls are that good tish johnson will make 300 consecutive events i don't have any doubt about that we can't get rid of her. <laughs> well, Carolyn coming up a little high, leaving the 4-7. When they get to a title match, both of these ladies, Carolyn, her title match winning percentage is 57.5%, and Liz Johnson's title match winning percentage is 78.5%. It's almost ridiculous. It is. So if when Liz gets there, she pretty much gets the job done. But Carolyn keeps covering her spears, giving herself a chance. Liz Johnson qualified with a 234 average, which was actually the second highest average, but she had a 19 and 5 match play record. So as you say every week, Kathy, those 30 pins are huge. And she won seven games oh, yesterday oh, oh. morning, which Ooh. helped her get into the top seed position. Well, going up high with that shot, leaving the 3610. Now we know Liz's A game is what she's doing. She's up and at him, very firm, very strong. But like I said, the hook spot is far to the right. Even she has to control her trajectory out onto the lane to make sure that it doesn't overhook. Oh, spare. She's also talking to her spare ball to hold, but she converts. Taking a look at our other finishers. In 16th, Brenda Norman from Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania made all four match play cuts. Kendra Gaines, another 300 from her this week. Dee Dee Davidson, we saw her last week. Chris Hall back out for a couple weeks. Good job to her. Tiffany, who won the last two weeks. Paula Mickelson back out a little bit. As Liz leaves a 10-pin. And Linda Kelly, rounding out the top 24, was just inducted into the WIBC Hall of Fame. And Caroline Abner tied Kim Adler for 24th position and they had to have a full game roll off but Kim Adler won and went on to match play. Caroline an amateur so pretty exciting for her to be tied for that position. It was a it was a very exciting game that they had a bowl for the winner to advance to match play. So Liz covers up the 10 pin and they're bowling for dollars prestige and of course a trophy that is about going to stand their height. Beautiful trophy engraved at the bottom with the name of the event. Always nice to have something to remember your great bowling by. Doran Ballard trailing by one pin. Oh, no. Wow, jumping the nose, four, six, seven. On lane eight, which is the lane that Carolyn told me she felt was tighter. She's really aggressive. That's a strong ball. It's got a semi-strong drill. It's got a little surface on it, but the lights play a part in the breaking down of the lane. Liz is in the same area as her. So the lanes are going to break down probably a little bit during this match. Well, and she's been, you know, the ball's laying off. It didn't really hit 
real good the first shot, so she was probably trying to make sure she got good hit on that shot. Human error, Jan. We mm -hmm. always try to force the ball to strike. So Carolyn now down by 15 pins on an open. Look at that, a 213 average for 75 television appearances. That's not easy to do on no. TV. Name of the game is knock a lot of your pins down in qualifying. <laughs> Give you a little cushion for match play and then win those bonus points. Okay, right back on it after that open frame. You know, Liz Johnson, we talk about the veterans, and we look at Liz as a veteran, but really, she was a rookie of the year just back in 96. Wasn't all that long ago. I guess it's it's longer than uh, and it probably seems. One of the greatest qualities about Liz's bowling career is her consistency. She's always there. Wow, tit for tat, and something's going on on lane eight. And once again, both girls said the lanes were tighter. Liz playing the lanes correctly, but they could be breaking down. She leaves the big four. Cheryl had the front part of the lane hooking early. That might be what these ladies are experiencing. It has to be. Well, she took two, and she heard her tell herself, take two, you never know. The pin's very important when it comes down to the end of the match. It's her second appearance on TV in the year 2003. It's been plagued by back injuries, and they've been, it's been better this year, though she said this week it was sore, a little bit sore for her again. Well, this week I think we had to throw the ball a little bit harder at certain points during play, whereas last week the scores were lower. You didn't have to force it so much. Very interesting also, Jan. Liz looks at the foul line and then brings her eyes up to watch her ball mm -hmm. go to the pocket. Very interesting. She, was, she says she actually draws a line from out back in, and then she throws the ball and watches it go out. It's, it's interesting to watch that. But as she sets it down, you're right, she's right at the foul line. And Carolyn with a big strike there, with Liz's open frame in the fourth, Carolyn had a one-pin lead that took it to 11 with that strike. It was a split for them this week during match play. They each won one apiece. Rubber match for this week. Doran Ballard now up by 11. She said she's feeling good about this year, even though she hasn't won. So far, a sixth, a second, a fourth, and an eighth. Good year. I'd feel good about yes, that. Yes, I, I would too. I felt great about 11th. Yes, 11th this week? I don't know. You're going to keep, you'll probably be in the show next week. I don't really We'll be talking it. about you. I hope so. Yeah, she's really rolling the ball extremely well, keeping her ball on line. That's so key. Even though the scores are high, you have to keep your ball on line. Look at that follow through, the rotation on the ball. The ball makes one move to the pocket. Carolyn has a great technique of staying behind the ball when she wants her ball to just make one move. Well, Liz Five. down by 21, needed a strike there, and oh my, up jumps a 4 9. Well, that was 100% better shot by Liz. She, too, stays behind the ball really nice. That's why her ball is so powerful when it hits the pocket. But that dreaded 4-9, just a little too high. One of those could have went, though. Now, Kathy, halfway through the match, down by was 21, now more than that. Do you th would you go for this? Yes. I think I'm she here has to win to. the tournament. Yes. You have to be clean. A little. And you heard her, Jan. She said, hook a little. She not only went for it, but she got it. That's why she's always here. She doesn't open doors for you very easily. Takes her plastic ball, goes cross lane, nabs the four pin on the left, just enough. That's picture perfect there, Jan. Right into the nine. And saves her a big deficit. Saves that, it's still at 21 pins, doesn't lose anything to the lead. And then backs it up with a strike. Exactly. Wow. That's some pressure spare shooting right there. Well, that's why she has five out of 11 titles from this position. Mm -hmm. She is a very challenging player. Carolyn up by 21, but if she strikes here, she'll take it to 31. 
Carolyn, the official spokesperson for College Bowling USA, excellent role model. Oh, excuse me, high school bowling. Thank you, Kathy. High School Bowling USA, Kim Terrell, the College Bowling USA spokesperson. Great light shot. As we said before, sometimes light is better. We saw Cheryl and Marianne both come in solid. The best of the PGA Tour tee it up this afternoon at that Buick Classic. It's a close one out there. Who will win this coveted title? Find out beginning at 3 p.m. this afternoon. That's on ABC Sports. And who will win this coveted title? Carolyn Doran Ballard now in the lead by 31 pins and can take it to 41. Her best finish second place at the Women's U.S. Open that this year. Best finish this year. Oh, very light. But, but she's keeping that ball on line. That is so important. See how it barely comes into the pocket? But she doesn't have any of them standing. See, she's got to steer it in. She knew it was light. But after some splits, hey, light's probably the better choice. She split, Liz split, and then the 4-9, absolutely. So Liz now needing a strike and leaving a 4-pin. Yeah. Liz has had a great shot to the pocket all week. But the ball's really jumping on the back, leaving the 4-pin. A lot of reaction on the back now. No problem. With the spare. Well, she too bowling very aggressively. She told us her mindset this week in a high scoring tournament was to play offensively. In other words, she was going for strikes as she now trails by 41 and desperately needs strikes. She wasn't content to shoot spares, and you can't be in a higher scoring tournament. Completely different from last week. Much better shot. Oh, she drops the four. You can see the back ends are really jerking a little bit now. It could be the ball she's using, could be the reaction on the back. But you can see, hits the seven, then the four. That's so, normally the reaction you're gonna get from the pins when your ball really comes in hard at the last minute. You're gonna trip fours when your ball really jerks into the pocket. Carolyn's last title coming last year at the Burlington Open. Oh, and she slaps out a 10 pin. She said to me before the match began, I'm not sure. I just shot 220, but I don't know whether I should shine this ball. Should I start with this other ball? I said, go with your gut. Everyone must bowl with your gut instinct. But she kept all her, all her adjustments very easy. Caution is not a factor can't be cautious and do you know did she end up do you know if she stayed with the ball that she was she stayed using? with the same ball That's because she, she just shot 220 mm -hmm. it's hard you know you want to shoot a big game but Thank you, sir. oh and she has everything falling right now that's a lady who knows her equipment yes. she knows her game she knows the game of bowling and she knows her equipment Another light shot, but look at Jan. There's five pins that could have stood there. <laughs> but when you're on, you're on. That angle of entry was so key. Oddly enough, Carolyn talked about that one of her strengths this week was her spare shooting, even though it was a high-scoring tournament, because she, too, said, too easily you get lazy and miss those spares in a higher-scoring event. Sure you do. So the lady who was the 2001 Player of the Year and Bowler of the Year with that record setting 11, broker title 11 records last year, had a, had a very good year, but not at that level. And this year in the top 10 every week. And now she's finally getting the job done. Probably glad she doesn't have to step up near the end to strike to win. Right. And now, of course, she carries the four pin on lane eight. Liz Johnson, a tremendous week. Liz is also a two-time Robbie Award winner, which is for uh, who best exemplifies a professional image on and off the lanes. She's also an Alberta E. Crow star of tomorrow. So the young gals who have won that award, this is what you can look to become. 
Liz Johnson, a younger player, also the future of women's professional bowling, with already 11 titles, Jan. Mm -hmm. She came through college bowling as well, the 93 Collegiate Bowler of the Year. Liz would like to say hi to her mom and dad, Conrad and Karen, extremely supportive of Liz's career. We will see more of Liz, I can guarantee you. So Carolyn Doran Ballard captures her first title of the season with a final score of 243 to Liz Johnson's 200. Stay with us. It was an exciting finish. Big victory for Carolyn Doran Ballard. We'll be right back. Championship round finals of the Greater Cincinnati Open are being brought to you by the Women's International Bowling Congress, striving for 88 years to identify and fulfill the needs of women bowlers. By Brunswick, the pin of choice for the PWBA national events. And by BowlersParadise.com, the official online pro shop of the Professional Women's Bowling Association. There's the champion of the Greater Cincinnati Open, Carolyn Doran Ballard, final score 243 to 200. And there's a beautiful trophy here. Julie Jackson, the general manager here at Super Bowl, is presenting the trophy. On behalf of Super Bowl, we'd like to present you with our trophy, and thanks for being here, and congratulations. Thanks for everything, Julie. Okay, and Joe Diamond, WIBC director, Carolyn, is coming in with the money and some beautiful roses. Ooh, uh, yeah, now do you want the flowers first or the money first? Both at the same time. Okay. <laughs> the flowers are on behalf of the Greater Columbus Bowling Association. Uh, Greater Cincinnati <laughs> Bowling Association, excuse me. And on behalf of the WIBC, we would like to present you, you with this check. It's been wonderful thank this week. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank WIBC for all their continued support and for really helping us out this year. We're looking forward to having a great relationship. I'd like to thank everyone here at Super Bowl, especially Randy and, San, uh, Randy and Julie. Sorry about that. Um, I'd like to thank all my family at home <laughs> who support me every week, and my sister Kathy, who gave me another note before I bowl tonight. Um, I'd like to thank Ebonite for supporting women's bowling and for supporting me for almost 10 years. They make the greatest equipment on the earth. And I'd also like to thank my husband, Dell, who's not here. <laughs> He's the first time I'm winning, and, you know, he's not within phone call distance, but I know he's watching, and I'd like to thank him for all his suggestions. And I'd also like to thank, really quick, John Gaines, after I got done bowling last night, position round, I talked about drilling a ball. He helped me out with the ball selection, and that is the ball I used tonight. So between him and Dell, they drilled the winning ball. Thank you. Carolyn, it's your first title of the year. Are you thinking about getting back that uh, bowler of the year? I'm just glad I won. I, you know, I'm not thinking about Bowler of the Year. There's been so much going on this year that I'm really just trying to concentrate on bowling great all week and hopefully just showing up for the top five. Okay, so Carolyn Doran Ballard wins title number 20. Tune in again next Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern for the finals of the Greater Harrisburg Open from ABC West in Mechanicsburg, PA. For Kathy Doran Lizzie, I'm Jan Schmidt. So long from Erlinger, Kentucky. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.